Hoffa Day and welcome to D18 Tonight. I'm your host, Crystal Paco. Joining us in studio are your senatorial candidates, Republicans Jose A. St. Augustine and Michelle Titano, as well as Democrat Franklin Menno. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us. We'll begin Thank you. by giving you each 30 seconds to introduce yourself. So ladies first, Michelle. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal and KUAM for allowing us to be here tonight D18. Um, Guahasi Michelle Hope Titano. I am the native Chamorro daughter of Guam and I am the current chairperson of the Guam Parole Board and I've worked uh, in the States. I've had my own business and also worked with nonprofit organizations, worked with government as well in other capacities. Thank you. Okay, Jose. Hafade uh, KUAM, thank you for having me here this evening. Hafade Andulokitoto Guam, Guauxi Jose at Fadi San Augustine, Toto Guam, Domonkulun Esti Giza Guamu Lokui. Um, I served in the Marine Corps for 30 years. I did six years as uh, the director for the uh, Department of Correction and currently the administrator for the Guam Veterans Affairs Office. Okay, Franklin. Uh, for day. Thank you, KOM, Crystal, and pe people of Guam. My name is Franklin J. Menno, also known as Bunker. I'm the Moana on Democrat ticket. I hope to seek your support. I will legalize recreation marijuana, marine, marine, marine environment protection and government cost cuts. Okay, before we continue with the viewer submitted questions, let's give you a chance to talk about your educational background as well as your community involvement. Jose, can you start off? Okay, yeah, thank you. So actually I'm a, a graduate of JFK in 1979, but I did two years college, University of Phoenix in uh, San Diego as well. Many of my training are leadership training in the Marine Corps, 30 years of good Marine Corps education and training adds on to a lot of um, skills that are perishable here in our government. Okay, Michelle. Okay, thanks. Well, so I've studied at uh, the University of Guam, GCC, and graduated from the George Washington Senior High School. And um, I've uh, done some um, other training. I've actually, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo and American Karate, so a little different there. Um, and um, just also the discipline with, with that martial arts is, is good training. Okay, thank you so much, and Franklin. Um, what was the question again? Uh, your community involvement as well as your educational background. Okay, uh, as for education, I lack education background, like uh, my two uh, constituents here. Um, although I would not let that deter my, my focus on working hard for the people of Guam and getting things resolved with our current issues. That's my focus in life, and it's what brought me out to run for senator. Okay, thank you so much. Franklin, we'll start off with question, this question. What is your top priority if elected as a senator in the 35th Guam legislature? Let's start with you, Franklin. Well, recreation marijuana, of course. Uh, work hard to convince the people it's just a plant and it's safe. And it could yield tax dollars for Guam. There are quite a bit of people that come here on a daily basis that can use or do use, but because it's illegal, it's impossible and then the marine environment there's things going on in the ocean that are not being controlled and cut government costs okay thank you so much same question for you michelle top priorities if elected yeah ma'am public safety is uh, of course my background now uh, being the chairwoman of the guam parole board and then uh, just being able to combine technology with public safety um, putting up some maybe some cct cameras um, in our high cr crime areas, working with law enforcement and the mayors to identify those problem areas and then being able to just monitor that um, with technology. Okay. Thank you so much. Jose. Well, Crystal, I, I want to first of all be the solution and the, not the problem. Uh, we need to st uh, stop reacting to things and, and we need to start planning ahead. There's still a lot of unfinished business with the 34th Guam Legislature, and I foresee that we're going to continue to deal with those uh, difficulties that they are uh, going through right now. So definitely I want to be part of the problem and the solution. Okay, thank you. While we wait for questions from our viewers at home, this, here's this next question. What political status option do you support? And please explain. Again, the options are independent, statehood, free association, or status quo. Well, let's start off with you, Mr. St. Augustine. Well, you know, um, I will state that status quo. Uh, and, and we need to be uh, straight up front that, you know, uh, we don't have any type of plans to entertain uh, any of the other three options. I say this because I think 
it's smart for us to move forward with where we're at and make life better than trying to go backwards to something that might end up not being a reality because the, the absence of any type of master plan. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. St. Augustine. Michelle, what are your, um, what's your opinion of political status? Well, I'd like to, I'm supporting what the people of Guam would vote for. Uh, personally, I, in order, I would prefer uh, free association if the United States continues to offer that in the mix, and then statehood, and then independence, or um, status quo, but since that's not part of that, that would be my top three. Okay, thank you so much. Franklin. Uh, it would be nice to see us tomorrow self-govern and, and run our system without uh, too much democracy, uh, but it is what it is now, and we can't turn back to the indigenous ways, but we can hopefully enforce uh, what the way it's more people have lived and culture. Also, with our government costs, we need to work hard and be together as a team to fix it. Okay, thank you so much again. Reminder for you at home, you can submit your questions on our Facebook Live. It's that easy. Send them here. I'll ask them. But it's time for a break. More when D18 returns. <laughs> Smiling is a natural response to joy, happiness, and excitement. Your smile reveals a lot about who you are. A healthy, beautiful smile can brighten your appearance and be an invitation to conversation and friendship. It is often one of the first things people notice about you. Now, thanks to the advancements in dentistry, you can have the smile you have always wanted, giving you an improved smile that looks and feels great my silver fillings that I have, they're getting older in my mouth and I need to replace them. So I've started to do that and I've replaced them with the white fillings and I've had really great success with that. It looks good, they feel natural, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the bleaching. I want my, a white look all around my mouth. adventure in the it and &E Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to it and &E postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. It's a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. Hoffman, welcome back to D18 tonight. We're taking your questions on Facebook Live. Again, with us in studio are your senat senatorial candidates, Franklin Menno, Michelle Titano, and Jose San Augustine. Right to the questions. This is a Facebook submitted question from Cherry Uggen who asks, do you support in getting more taxes dedicated to GMH and education? Jose, your thoughts? Yes, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, absolutely. The hospital and the schools has been in a disaster for the longest time. I'm talking Simon Sanchez. Uh, the only solution that we could come up with, and we need to be very straight up front with our folks here in Guam, that there are no other option but to sacrifice now and not have to react later when it's too late. But I do support, and I, I preferably that we go about doing this through sales tax, because we still have other schools out there that are in the same situation as Simon Sanchez. Thank you. Thank you so much. Michelle, your thoughts? Shucks, you know, sales tax are always hard, or taxes anywhere. So I would like to, for us to seriously consider uh, private partnerships, private, private 
partnerships, uh, public partnerships with uh, for GMH <laughs> to be able to work together so that we can uh, possibly bring in other people and other forms. Uh, there are organizations out there that help struggling um, hospitals kind of get back on track. And also for education, look at maybe supporting uh, privately funded charter schools to help alleviate um, DOE's uh, struggles. I can see you nodding over there in the corner. Franklin, you're next. I agree with some of the stuff she says, but um, we got, what, a $486 million physical budget. I think we need to find the leaks in that funding and so that we can be used properly for our GMH and the school. And I oppose taxing more from the struggle. People struggle and we're going to take more money. It's not good. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. We have another viewer submitted question. This question is, I'm sorry. What is, what is your take to expand the economy since the island is in limbo? Franklin, you start. Well, uh, I think if we get recreational marijuana for the third time, I probably should <laughs> uh, start it. Um, it can generate millions of dollars. Colorado, Washington State, they're doing good. Reduces crime rate, reduces alcohol abuse, and all kinds of positive from it. The money it will generate will help pay the taxes instead of taking it from people. It by itself can generate taxes. I've done my study with uh, areas like Washington and Colorado. They're doing fine. Mr. Sinakasin, what would you do to expand the economy? Well, I think we should go back to our basics of farming. I think we should expand our, our agriculture program here on Guam. We should expand the uh, uh, Department of Agriculture uh, in itself. Uh, I really think that when we start uh, supporting our farmers, our local farmers, uh, and teaching about farming in schools and start producing so that we, should, we could self-sustain instead of relying on um, uh, importation. Thank you so much. Michelle? Yeah, I like fisheries. I like to be able to maybe talk to um, our federal counterparts and, and our uh, congresswoman and whoever that may be next uh, to be able to increase our, our miles out there because if we do that, there's going to be more opportunities for Guam to be able to bring in uh, more fish and be able to have that type of uh, income producing industry. And also, I agree with Joe about uh, agriculture. We farming would be great in increasing that as well. Okay, thank you again. That question was from Ben B or from Trini Bukal. That was from their Facebook question. All right. This next question, I've actually never seen this question on D18 yet. Do you think the lieutenant governor position should be eliminated as an elected position, Ms. Michelle? Whoa, that's um okay. That's a question <laughs> that's there. Um, I think if the people of Guam decided to remove that um, position, um, if it'll save money, that's something that we can consider. Um, myself, um, I think we, again, need to explore it a little bit more. Um, I think that position helps. Um, I guess other people have different uh, opinions, but I mean, it could be, and it, we could continue to keep it, depending on what the people of Guam want, yeah? Okay, Franklin, your thoughts on the LT? I think that decision should be left to the people of Guam. Um, those are tax dollars that pay his wages if they choose on an election to eliminate that position as a government entity then it should be up to the people. Thank you so much Mr. Well, Sinagustin. Thank you for that question. Well coming from the military there's a reason why there's a there's a CO and an XO and a sergeant major and sergeant within the chain of command. Uh, it is smart to keep the lieutenant governor position for many reasons in the absence of the governor having to go off island to do other businesses, the lieutenant governor has to uh, remain uh, to be the person in charge. And there's so many other things that, uh, you know, between the governor and lieutenant governor, they have to share the wealth of responsibility amongst, uh, you know, the, the, the island. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for that round of questions. But more questions to come. You're, You're watching D18 tonight. You know, one of the things I really like about, uh, about Lewis and Josh as well is that they're really down to earth, they're easy to talk to, uh, they're really big supporters with not only small business, but uh, entrepreneurs and definitely helping out people with the community. Uh, falls in line with 
what I believe in in terms of my business. So it's a, it's a perfect fit to be working and supporting with uh, Lou and Josh. They're always looking to, obviously looking for change. My suggestion is if you have an issue or if you have a, a concern or problem, I guarantee you they have an open door policy. Approach it to them and see what those issues are and I'm sure they'll give you a response for what, what your perception is. I would say anybody can quit. Don't be anybody. My name is Ray Chargoff and I'm supporting Lou and Josh. I'm in. I'm Lou Leon Guerrero and I approve this message. Where will your sip take you? You're going to need more than an oil change. Okay. Okay. Try our new slushies at McDonald's. Tropic Twist, Blue Raspberry, and Cherry Limey. Perfect for summer for a limited time. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Hoffman, welcome back. Let's jump into our next round of questions. Viewer Terry Demion Cadahay asks, are you in favor of implementing furloughs and reduction in work hours of government employees as an austerity measure? Mr. Sinagustin. Well, Terry, thank you for that question. That's a great question. Actually, furloughs for me should be uh, a last resort. But if it comes to, uh, to the point where uh, the government doesn't have funds, to, uh, to pay employ employees, then we got to do what we got to do. But as long as the people understand that many of those services, which are critical, uh, might be hampered because furloughs is implemented. But I like the idea when uh, you, know, you give them you know, three days off, that will give them more time at home with their family and enough time to do some cleaning and some rest too. Thank you so much, Mr. Sonagasi. Mr. Menno. Oh. Uh, don't think we should turn to furlough as the first choice when it comes to fixing our crisis, um, especially safety personnel shouldn't even be on the table. But if we had to turn to that to save the government, I would start with high rank, high pay salary and work down instead of from the bottom up. People struggle every day. That's enough. We not stop hurting them. The taxpayers are suffering. Okay, thank you so much. Michelle. Yeah, so uh, those are always tough, but if necessary, there needs to be an assessment and ample time given so that those who will be or will be considered for the furlough have time to kind of adjust to the possibility of not having income and or working. Um, that for me also is a last resort if we can cut other areas that we can look at in saving, uh, being cost saving in our expenditures then we need to do that before we take away people's jobs and livelihoods. Thanks. Thank you so much. This next question comes from Tony Martinez, who asks, what ideas do you have to tighten the gap on veterans' issues? More importantly, veterans' adequate health care here on island. Michelle, if you can start us off. That's a good question. I know that um, we still struggle with that nationally, uh, but as well as on Guam. Um, I think we've made little strides with having the little clinic. But I think better communications with our U.S. counterparts and then being able to closely work together with them and having an open line of communications, maybe some podcasts on Facebook with the veterans to be able to let, have them let us know what their concerns are and how we can actually implement and bring it to a closure and, and take care of some real issues. Thank you so much, Michelle. This should be uh, very close to you. Yes. <laughs> Just an Augustine. Tony, thank you for that question. You know, I, I, I try to keep it out of politics. Right, but we all know that politics is the vehicle to many of the answers. So, you know, I, I hope, like I mentioned to many of the senators uh, like a month ago, that we do not give up the fight to continue to build ourselves a veterans hospital here on Guam. In the absence of that veterans hospital, I will continue to fight to ensure that the community-based outreach clinic continues to do more 
uh, services with the limited number of personnel that do, they do have up there. We have many challenges. We're going to overcome. I'm the guy you need to keep to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Franklin, your thoughts on getting services to veterans, especially health care? Well, I, I, I can't see why we even have that problem. Uh, they've served their country, the men and women, sacrifice, their family of sacrifice. It, it's a federal government. They, they should pay them back and have full support, have hospitals, clinics. Uh, I'm not a veteran, so I, I, I have to say to all veterans, thank you for your service and your time and your sacrifice. I wish and hope we can find a solution soon. Thank you so much, Franklin. This next question comes from viewer Jane Hayer, who asks, what makes you stand out in the crowd of candidates running? Franklin, let's start with you. Wow, that's a really good one. Um, <laughs> I'm probably the one with the least amount of education, but uh, I've come from struggle and know how, what people go through in life and the needs that they're gonna, we're gonna have to afford them in the future so they can do better, better high paying jobs, um, things of that nature. Uh, but as a standout, I'm the only one co bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Bunker. Michelle, what makes you stand out in the crowd? Hey, I'm a black belt and I'll fight for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice, and of course, nice. your rights, your uh, nice. all the for your justice and righteousness that so we can live in peace and prosperity and protect those uh, closest and nearest to our hearts, our families, our fiscal uh, situation and improve upon that education so we can continue to get better and improve our sustainability on all fronts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our black belt, yes. you don't want to mess with her. <laughs> Mr. Yes. St. Augustine. Well, thank you for that question. Uh, definitely, um, I have the passion. And I know that we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, 30 years in the United States Marine Corps, I have so much thick skin that I could take a lot of heat. In saying that, uh, what makes me stand out is I want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And uh, I wish that uh, you all consider me Number 13, uh, Republican Party. Thank you. Thank you yes, so much. Stay, stay tuned. More when D18 tonight continues after the break. <laughs> Is there anything that tastes better than this? Revenge. The future is not so far. Looks like you guys could use a hand. Summer is here. And at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event. Right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab. Or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card. Where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance events. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. And welcome back to D18 tonight. We're getting close to wrapping up our show, but don't forget, up next is our exclusive digital show, The After Party with Sabrina Salas Metanani and Chris Barnett and our analysts. But first, let's ask a few more questions to our candidates that are with us on the show. And I thought we had to ask this question because this comes from your fellow candidate, I believe it's right up here, Ned Pablo, who was actually on D18 already, asked, do you support indigenous Chamorro people's rights? Mr. St. Augustine, you can start. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I, I want to you know, continue to see the implementation of the Chamorro language in the schools. But when I brought up earlier about farming, you know, many of uh, the indigenous people uh, grew off the land, living off the land, and we don't, you know, we don't expect importations uh, of, of goods. Uh, so when we talk about in, indigenous people, it's, it's the local people, it's the way they used to live, it's the culture, the tradition. And just to let you know, I am a full-time full farmer. So I am an indigenous person. Thank you, Ned, for that question. <laughs> Michelle, what's your answer okay. to that? Of course, I'm supporting our local indigenous um, rights. 
Um, we are the people of Guam. God has given us a responsibility to be here. We take care of the land, the air, the sea, the people, of course. And on our fronts, again, because we, we need to continue our forward movement culturally, our, our, like Joe said, our language, our culture, dance, our traditions, weaving, fishing, and all, all the other uh, parts of our culture that are important. We need to make sure that we continue perpetuating that. Thank you so much, Michelle. Bunker, since we're going to call you that from now on. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> support indigenous rights. Um, we, uh, we should come together as a, as, a, as a whole on this island and c reach a common goal as to what the Chamorros who are the people of this island. Can, uh, we need to practice our ways and teach them stuff they don't learn at a dance club, practicing the Chamorro dance, husking, grinding, collecting, gathering, and, and learning how to process and cook so you can survive. That's how the Chamorros lived 500 years ago. Thank you so much. This next question comes from Art Murphy, who asks, very simply, thoughts on tax structure? Michelle, you can start. Oh, t tax structure, gosh. Again, more, more research needs to be done because, you know, one thing I don't want to do is become like Puerto Rico. And taxing ourselves, I think, um, without having to really look into the, the consequences of the tax situations. Um, is it, I don't want us to go into that where we get more in debt. So it's going to be research. We need to talk to the analysts, um, budget guys, and collectively come together so that we can strategically figure out what's the best position for Guam, not just raise taxes because, oh, it's the thing to do. That's where we can raise money. We can make money. So we need to be prudent about it. We need to be wiser about that. Mr. St. Augustine. Well, I think it's very important to make sure that, you know, we don't burden our people, right? But uh, we also want to make sure that we collect those taxes that are due. And, uh, you know, we have to be very straight up front with our people again to let them know that uh, for us to improve our community, to improve our hospital, to improve our schools. And like I mentioned, there's, there's GW, there's Benaventi Middle School. There's other schools out there that are 50 years old and older, uh, more than that, that are just waiting to be, uh, you know, uh, not in a good condition to be occupied. Thank you. Bunker. Well, um, it's a tough thing because we're hurting and ta maybe taxing would have saved us, but we shouldn't resort to taxing more and we should start resorting to fixing the, the issues in the government that's wasting money so we don't have to tax more. And then uh, collecting, having a better collection system for taxes that are not all paid on time or being evaded. There's all kinds of tricks people can do maybe, I don't know, I'm not too sure. So it's now that time of the night to give your closing remarks, because we're almost done, guys. You've survived an episode of DAT tonight, and all of you have submitted questions so you can breathe a little bit. Thank what are your you. final words to the viewers at home that you might want to leave them with so that they can think about when they head to the polls on August 25th? Don't forget, guys, that's the primary, primary. election date. Bunker, let's start with you. Well, August 25th, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you show up and make a choice. Choose who you believe in. Make, make a good choice and think wisely. Uh, in order to fix, we need to work together and focus on the future. Our children depend on it. Guau, si Franklin, J. Meno, Maaganjo, si Bunker, Gaigi, number one, get a Democrat ticket. And Franklin, J. Meno, also known as Bunker, number one on the Democrat side. I hope and humbly ask for your support, and let's do this together. So you did it for you in Shimura and in English. Okay. Mr. St. Augustine, your final words to the viewers at home. Well, you know, thank you for this evening, and I hope that I was clear enough with regards to uh, how I envision we should uh, uh, go forward in improving our schools and hospitals. Uh, but I encourage you all to get out there and register to vote. Your vote is very important. We are and always will be in, in a hard uh, situation, but we need to hear from the people. We need to hear from you so that we, we can make that clear uh, decision as to how we can move forward without really hampering uh, your, your needs and hampering your, your uh, already strained uh, finances. Guaxio Seat Fadi San Augustine, number 13, the Republican Party. Please vote for me. Thank you. 
<laughs> that, that you're in a clap there bunker. <laughs> Michelle has to go first. Wait, your last, your last, she's going to no, kick I'm your butt. 30 <laughs> seconds more. <laughs> Michelle. Hafide uh, Talu. Dankulun is to do smasi to you, Crystal, to your team out here, KUAM. And of course, your audience uh, for having us here tonight and listening to us. Guahusi Michelle Hope Taitano, native Chamorro, daughter of Guam. I'm number seven on the Republican ballot, humbly asking for your vote. Uh, I am committed to our island, serving her uh, faithfully, and I do believe in God. And thank you so much. God bless you, and take care. Thank you so much. Best of luck to all three of you. Again, we encourage you, all three of you, you can still go online and answer the questions. So right. Facebook Live, Bunker. Okay because he was telling me he doesn't have a TV. So he's going to go online yeah. after this show and he's going to answer the rest of your questions because I actually didn't get to all of them. There were still questions about the firing range and other things about education. And so stay tuned. More, when, you can actually catch the after party on our digital exclusive. Good night. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's wardrobe by Royal Bix.